Hey Aries, welcome to your reading. These are general readings. Take what works, leave what doesn't. Uh, if I don't catch a wavelength or storyline here, you can check your other major placements, or even if I do, check them just for fun. Uh, I'll be doing oracle readings over here and then a more traditional tarot spread over on Vimeo. So let's get going with these crows, smart of crows. That's funny. I thought like 20 came out, but just one. Just one came out. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we've got. Whoa. This is a heavy or pretty kind of intense here. We have dominant territory and grief. Not perky. Uh, we can we can only go up from here, right? So uh, let's talk about dominance. This is a there's a, there might be power dynamics at play here. Who's in charge? Who has a right? Uh, who's telling? Who, someone may be trying to tell you what to do. Maybe someone is trying to establish dominance so that you will do what they want you to do in the future by um, making your life a little miserable now if you don't do what they want. Uh, someone is definitely. Uh, making a play a power play here there is a power dynamic involved and there's a sense of someone trying to keep someone else down now I know for many of us that is a very strange idea why would you try to do that just live your life that seems like a lot of extra energy uh, but for some people that is exactly what they want to do and that is their mode of operation so there is someone here that is uh, trying to control the situation trying to keep someone down maybe trying to keep someone depressed and under control so control issues I wouldn't be surprised this is like the emperor card I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that there so um yeah, control issues at play here. Territory, this is all about having good boundaries. Um, someone trying to control something. And uh, I, I feel like this control issue, this dominance issue, is going to be an encroachment on someone's territory. This is a really good, healthy boundary you might have set. Um, I would expect um, or be you, you might be experiencing someone trying to cross a boundary that you've already set in the past. You've already made it very clear that... Um, that what you want uh right that you stay on your side of the bed i'll stay on mine and then somebody's trying to um encroach on your territory right and sometimes um in different positions in different positions um in life you know we do have to be territorial and sometimes that can feel a little petty or a little weird uh to be a little territorial but the problem is when so especially if someone's trying to establish dominance or control they can start with smaller pettier things um and uh and 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 push that button a little bit and see how much you're willing to take um so at some point when you're establishing boundaries with someone who has historically not respected the boundaries you do have to do something that seems very petty and might seem petty and weird to you to establish this boundary or re-establish this boundary um, it may be a little strange, but if you know the person and you know the power dynamic involved, this may be someone that you give them an inch, they're going to take a mile. So you have to be a little bit petty about that inch, about them going over an inch. Now, if you, a lot of people, they can go over an inch and be like, okay, sorry, I kind of overstepped there, right? And that's great, but uh, that's not the type of person we're dealing with here. We're dealing with someone with dominance issues, power control issues, um, trying to cross a boundary and trying to... Um, yeah, encroach on your territory. I mean, they, it's important. Being territorial for many animals is crucially important. I mean, it's interesting because humans are both like interpersonal group dynamic, but we also have to be territorial. Like it's not going to do for, a lion's not going to last very long if he's not territorial about his hunting area and where he gets his food from. So this could be a work situation where someone is um, trying to sort of encroach on your responsibilities, maybe um, siphon some of them over so that they can you know, get uh, get more status or, or work up whatever it is that they want out of the situation. So the, the your I would expect that this uh, dominant power control issue is is uh, is crossing someone's crossing a line and a boundary. Grief. Um, this is not going to make you very happy. This is this is going to cause grief and frustration and sadness. So there is something maybe that's happened in the past with a territorial dynamic, um, power dynamic. 
um, there is some sadness and some issues. So maybe the, the power dynamic was already established, boundaries were crossed, and now uh, there's been some sort of loss. There could be, this grief could also be about loss of trust, about someone that you did trust, someone that you had given a chance to, someone you'd given that inch to, and then they took a mile. It could be that sort of grief of, of what a relationship could have been, what it might have been, uh, but what it cannot be. And, and you may be realizing that, that there's there's something you know, give yourself some time to grieve the relationships that could have been or, you know, if, if other people had been healthy, if other people hadn't had uh, control and dominance issues, if other people had respected the boundaries that you set, you know, when all of that gets crossed, there there is a grief of uh, and a sadness of like, well, this could have been really cool. It's just too bad it's not going to be able to. So allowing yourself to grieve sort of the loss of maybe trust, the loss of maybe a, a relationship or a dynamic, um, something like that. This could be about grief too, about you needing to have your own space for grief and someone maybe and sadness and loss. I mean, yeah, it, it seems like there's something that maybe even didn't even get a chance to develop because this boundary was crossed. Um, mm, I love this to the, we have a uh, queen bee here. I like seeing this, uh, with this whole dynamic there, the queen bee, uh, she is, well, she can come across as a little bit of a bitch, right? But this would be someone who's just, at least in their mind, dealing with a territorial issue. This is my honey, my, my honey pot, right? This is, this is my gold. This is my liquid gold. I, me and my team and my people and all of my, my energy have gone out and worked countless hours to collect this and do this. Um, so this is ours. And if you want to stick your hand in that, you want to just take what's yours, you're going to get some stings. You're going to get stung and it is absolutely her right to protect that. And if you're going to be such an idiot as to go into a beehive where there are these, these little stinger things and just take something, well, you can expect these consequences. Like this is definitely someone who is intent on enforcing consequences for someone crossing their boundary. There's a very feminine energy here when we might label this person as, as a bitch or mean, or doesn't want to work with other people or whatever, but but the, this person has a right to defend their work, defend what they did, um, at, at least in their mind. You may be experiencing someone as being kind of cruel. There is the other aspect of Queen Bee is this, if, this, if this protective dynamic goes too far, then the bees can become aggressive and they can become killer bees, right? Uh, and Queen Bee definitely has a dominant situation associated with it, especially if we're talking about, like I, I find this actually confusing because on the one hand, the card is about someone who is protecting maybe their children, protecting somebody that they care about, and they're being very protective and very territorial about that, um, about their, their, you know, gold or their, their um, assets or the fruits of their labors. They're very protective of that because it's, it represents quite a lot of hours and work. Um, but the other aspect of Queen Bee is we also have these sort of, it reminds me of, you know, these uh, high school girls. Actually, honestly, I think boys have the exact same dynamic going on uh, where someone maintains power, status and control um, over other people through ridicule for other things. Um, and they're not, uh, they're not there to benefit other people. They're there for the status and control. And right, and even she's got these two little sidekicks. The queen bee always has these sidekicks that help her maintain her power. So we could be going either way here or even talking about uh, to do in this power dynamic, in this dominance dynamic, in these boundaries, we might have someone who's very rightfully defending their boundary while someone else is trying to overstep and gain more power. So that's an interesting way I think that this queen bee can be uh, affecting this reading is that we can read it both ways. We can read it from either perspective. Um, and then we have pure nature. It's just someone's nature uh, here is what I'm seeing. Sometimes this is like a uh, this this could be part of the grief to a realization and opening and understanding of a situation where once you see it you can't unsee it once you understand this uh, dominance issue this queen bee issue you can't unsee it you have to um, you have to deal with the new reality right so this is something that's just been a bud it blooms there's no going back to what was before the other thing I'm seeing about pure nature is um, you know if we're just taking verbiage here just the verbals not the not the visuals um 
And so queen b would be about dominance, about establishing and maintaining dominance, and maybe by using uh, minions or, or underlings to achieve that. And pure nature, I think, would be sort of, um, I mean, it would be someone's nature. It's just who they are. They, they're not going to change. They're not going to be able to change. This queen b, no matter which side of the equation I, I talked about this queen b lands on, we're talking about someone who, I mean, it, even even people that are queen bees in high school, they can change a little bit, but there's there's some sort of power dynamic issue in my experience that they may always be having to work with and be. It's just their nature. The, the, this dominant situation, this you give them an inch, they take a mile. It's just their nature. And you may have to grieve that once you see it. Uh, you won't be able to unsee it. And you may have to grieve sort of what might have been you know, just ask for my honey next time. Don't just take it or just, you know, work with me here. Uh, respect my boundaries. I just see so much about respect my boundaries and just someone is just, that's, that's not who they are. They're not able to see the value in that and understand that good boundaries make good relationships. They're not able to see that. And that you may just be dealing with someone who's like in incapable of anything else. So then you plan accordingly. You don't then go, okay, they're incapable of anything else. I guess I just have to put up with whatever they do. No, you plan accordingly and, and make decisions in your life based on this thing you, you know, can't and see that they can't do anything else. They can't be anybody else. All right. Um, huh. Okay. You're already doing it. Stop overthinking. Keep facing your true north. Okay. You, you, you've, you've already done, you're already doing it. You're already on the, the response you need to have to the situation. You already know what it is. You've already done it. You've established possibly boundaries with someone once before in the past. Uh, the issue could be re reemerging now, but you've already done it. You're familiar with the situation. You already know how to respond. You maybe don't feel like responding. You already know what you want out of the situation. You already know you've been down this path before. You're currently on this path. So I don't see anything where it's like, oh, you need a major wake up call. You need, it's just like, I think the sadness kind of sets in that this situation is always going to have this weird dynamic to it. Um, but you're already, you're already, you know, if you need to see a therapist to help you establish better boundaries, you've already done that. Um, if you need to, um, you're already doing something that's very helpful to the situation and is, is in exactly, if not exactly, it is right in line with how you need to be responding. In line with that, we have hold your vision, right? The path before you isn't going to be easy. It's not going to be simple. It's not going to be straightforward. It may be quite a workout. Uh, maintaining and holding boundaries with someone that has dominance issues is exhausting, so that's a little bit of what I'm seeing here is this may be very exhausting and depleting, but you need to keep going. You're on, the, all I'm seeing here is you're on the right track. You're responding appropriately. Keep at it. Hold tight. Hold those boundaries tight. Don't give the inch. You know what happens when you give them an inch. They do take a mile. Like, so don't, so hold the boundary. Hold your vision. Hold your boundary. Um, you already have set the boundary, I see, and you just need to, to stay strong and hold it. So stay strong and hold it. Now we have some, now we get into a little bit more confusing, uh, at least for me. Nothing is yet set in stone. You don't know, you don't, don't, don't assume you know how this is all going to turn out because um, there are people I've had to hold a boundary with consistently for four years being called, you know, petty and all sorts of names. And, and, but after four years, they got it. And every so often they challenge it, but I've gotten really good at like, nope, nope. Nope. Uh, so, so you don't know how this is going to respond. This person may eventually, after several years of application, uh, get it. They may not. But um, so there's something about the situation that's not quite settled. I want to say settled law yet. There's something that's not quite settled into a pattern or it's not quite very clear. Um, people do have free will. People can change somewhat. So, um, so th there's not, the outcome isn't very clear here. We also have, um, two things of release, letting go. And I don't think it's letting go of the boundary. I think it's letting go of trying to control another person or trying to control a situation. All you can really do is state what you want, keep in your territory, stay in your lane, and they're going to do whatever they're going to do. They're going to flail. They're going to scream. They're going to cry. They're going to call you names, whatever they're, they do. And maybe eventually they get it. 
um, if they want to have a relationship with you, they're going to have to respect this boundary, whether they like it. Respect is a, is a funny word because they can't, they, they may not respect the boundary intellectually, but as long as they hold the boundary and like actually don't cross it and respect it in that way, you can be fine. Right? So you don't really know how that, how this is going to turn out or how they're going to respond. Um, what do you need to release waning moon? Um, this is like it's it's safe to move on there might be rest I, I feel like this comes after this other part um, rest release breathe out relax establish the boundary you know hold your vision protect yourself and then let it go let let the rest go do what you have to do here and then um, don't hold on to any outcome Hold on to your vision. I find that really interesting. The your is really coming out here for me, like your vision. Hold on to your vision. How they respond to it is anybody's guess. But what the boundary you want, the territory you want to mark, hold that. Hold that. Uh, we don't know how they're going to actually respond. Don't try to figure it out. Time to breathe out. So, uh, you know, relax when you can. Uh, let go. I feel like this is just like establish the boundary and let go. Don't don't keep mulling it over. Don't keep figuring out like what else you could do to make it clear. Like it's almost like you've already made it clear. You just need to hold it. Um, so, but what we're not holding is our breath. We're not holding our breath, waiting for them to, um, to respond a certain way. Cause we just don't really know. Um, we're not going to hold our breath waiting for anything. Uh, you're going to relax. You're going to let go of the situation. You've established the boundary, hold the boundary and uh and let the, it reminds me of yoga in a way like hold the pose but relax into the pose all right if that made sense to you if you want more join me over on vimeo if not i'll see you in a while